I feel a lot of the uh, complaints coming in that deal with consumer fraud protection, which really falls under our economic crime uh, unit. And so these are more white collar crimes, kind of financial type crimes. Um, theft could be present, it's fraud. But I feel these um, complaints that come in from individuals in the community. And so they come in either through our hotline on the phone or there's an email. But a, a lot of the other things that I do, a big part of it is, is educating and, and outreach. And so obviously a lot of that is happening from a virtual standpoint, but it's great. I guess one of the, the few good things about COVID, and there's not a lot, is a lot of people that maybe did not embrace technology before, but the downturn are, are, are opening up and willing to embrace technology on new levels. And definitely um, more of our, our senior population, we see a lot of people tapping in because they want to stay connected and they want to learn. Um, and they need to purchase um, items online and what have you. So being able to educate from a virtual standpoint has actually been pretty, it's been pretty easy and we've been able to reach I definitely been able to reach a lot more people. And so the things that I cover when I'm out educating and, and, and talking with folks, definitely matters of fraud. Uh, we cover elder, uh, elder abuse. We have prevention seminars. Uh, I haven't done a, a lot of that um, over the last few months, but it is it's something that kind of falls under uh, my umbrella um, and other individuals at the, at the office uh, out of the 18th. I do push out a lot of consumer fraud alerts and advisories. So the alerts tend to go out uh, definitely when there's a sense of urgency, if there's something that's happening a lot that I really need to get this out in front of uh, the district. More of what I've been doing, more advisories, it's the education piece. So I have drafted and pushed a lot of those out. I have a, a pretty substantial database that's, that's growing about 1,800. Um, you know, emails, and this, these are individuals, these are businesses, this is other law enforcement agencies and what have you, but I'm pushing these alerts out and these advisories. And um, I'm gonna go over a lot of the ones that I pushed out, we're gonna see here in a few minutes in, in the uh, various slides. Um, so that, like I said, so this is growing. Uh, another thing is the Citizens Academy. I know Parker PD typically does this a lot of, uh, the other local law enforcement agencies tend to do like assistance academy, happens in other counties. We've been able to do two during COVID. We did one in the spring and we just finished our fall one here uh, a couple weeks ago. And it was three weeks, one hour a night, virtual presentation of all the different aspects of uh, the district attorney's office, uh, cold cases, SVU, um, aspects of the trial, domestic violence, just pretty broad. It was very well attended. Virtually, we've been able to like triple the attendance compared to when we did this in person. Uh, we're going to be doing, we've typically have done a senior law summit. We've done it at the Schwab facility in the past. We're going to try to do it again in the spring. We'll see what that looks like. It's going to look very different, but that's something else that kind of falls under my umbrella. Talked about the hotline, and then obviously I work with different media outlets um, and agencies. So, so a big part of what I do is, is also communications. So I, I'm gonna just let you look at this. I'm not gonna go through it, but like I said, so the consumer fraud protection is really part of the, uh, with, <clears throat> with our, uh, our office as part of our ECU unit. And <clears throat> right here, these are just a few of the things that ECU uh, covers. And so the team that I work with in ECU consists of prosecutors, um, detectives, and um, inspectors that should matter, when matters come in, it's something that we are able to address that it falls within our jurisdiction, so to speak, <clears throat> on the criminal side, uh, then it's, it, it goes over to, to these individuals. They also receive calls outside of me and some of these other areas that you see right here but it's pretty broad. And once again, these are the white, white collar crimes, financial crimes that are taking place in our district. And, and there are plenty, there are definitely plenty. So 
So as we move into the presentation right here, I, I do kind of need to start, and I've been mentioning this, um, with the pandemic, okay? And I call this first slide, a day in the life of a pandemic. So we all know this, it's COVID-19 is impacting all of us on one level or another. And it's all ages, it's individuals, it's businesses, it's, it's impacting our economy. It's gonna be around for a while. And as we know, uh, numbers are going up here uh, recently. And so there's new measures, it sounds like, that may start to be put into place across the state and of course other states. So it's very real, it's here, and it's, it's impacting all of us. But in situations like this, and we've had other things like this, we've had other kind of pandemics, we've had economic downturns or whatever, there's always something, it's every few years, with these moments, this, this is when fraud really blossoms. Fraud's always out there, always has been. But in moments like this, the scammers really up their game. And they show themselves more and more and in so many different types of verticals. So, so right now, so that's the fraud, but, but the theme, the genre right now is it's the pandemic. And like it says right here, we've endured turbulent weather in the past, had cloudy days. Um, there's always gonna be something. It, it, next time it'll come in it, just with a different theme. But because of that, and since fraud has always been around, a lot of what we're seeing are the same old types of scams and fraud. It really is. It's just the jacket is, is the pandemic, but it's kind of more of the same. And like I said, fraud, it's been out there. Fraud does not discriminate. It hits the young, it hits the old. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to share a few things with you tonight that will surprise you because there's some areas that people don't consider in relation to fraud that they should pay attention to. And maybe it relates more to your grandchild or to your child, or it could be your parent. But and cover a lot of different things because it hits it hits across the, the spectrum. Um, so you know, as we've been sitting here trying to teach our kids and grandkids to get through school, and we're trying to do our jobs online, the scammers are doing their day job, and they're global, and their their day job is to fraud you. And these are you need to understand that these rarely are individuals. These this is organized crime. They're very is very much real here in the United States, in North America. It's true across the country, I mean, um, across the world. And so a lot of this is international as well. And they're professional groups, these are call centers. Um, they're good at what they do. And what they're really good at doing, especially when things are uncertain, there's so much uncertainty like there is right now, and things are so emotional, they try to get us however they may come to us, they try to put us in the ether. And they can be very, and when they do that, and on top of it, tend to be very threatening in their tone and their demands and this and that, some things that you typically would never do, you may do. And a, a small trip can be a huge trip. So they don't want you thinking, they don't want you deciding. They wanna get you to where you're switching off that logical side how you think and they want to put you in an emotional state and while emotions serve as well and it's a good place to be in matters like this we don't always make the right decisions when we're in that um, emotional place so they do feed off our emotions and that can lead to trouble so really who's most at risk uh, in moments like this or in, in around fraud None of this should really be a surprise, but the people that are most at risk really are the people that just tend to open any email that they receive. Um, a lot of people don't do that, but those who, who tend to open everything uh, tend to expose themselves. Those that open up an email or a text and then they click on a link because the instructions say click here, open themselves up to even more trouble. That can take sometimes years to recover from. So those who receive solicitations through email, through text, we all do. Uh, those who are asked for personal information, 
provide it without verifying the source. And the key thing right here, and I'm gonna go over this over and over and over in the presentation, is if, if you get an email or you get some type of solicitation or something that it, it, it seems like it may be true or you're interested enough and it could be the you purchasing something online, the safest thing you can do, the most logical thing that you can do is you need to drive the discovery. You need to drive the research. If, if, if you're not sure if it's your bank that's reaching out to you because they say that you've done this or that, or your account's frozen, hang up, ignore the email and call the bank because you'll have the, the number on probably the back of a card or whatever, call them directly and see if this is true or not. If it's a charity that you may want to give to, but something doesn't seem right, go to the, go to the site. And I'm going to cover this with charities. Uh, another thing you can do to find it if they're real and legitimate is go to the Colorado Secretary of State website and see if it's valid or not. But if you drive the conversation and you drive the discovery, you'll be protecting yourself in more ways than you think. You should always um, have current uh, spyware virus protection. Those that don't are at risk. FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, throughout this year, the area that has had the biggest amount of fraud and scams has been online purchases. Um, a lot of that has happened because of COVID. Things are related to COVID and people pay and they just don't receive. So once again, you, you got to do the research. We're not hanging out at Starbucks like we used to or places like that, but those who tend to use Wi-Fi hotspots, public hotspots, are at risk. It, it doesn't take anything for someone to tap into you in a public Wi-Fi. And sometimes they just look over your shoulder and they can see various bits of information. So things can be very sophisticated and they can be very old school by just looking over your, your shoulder. So sitting at a Starbucks or a place like that, and I go to Starbucks, I'm not picking on them, and sitting there and doing your banking online and paying your mortgage, not a good idea. Not a good idea. So those are at risk. And then, so down on the bottom also, those that don't vet the businesses or charities before choosing. Most of us are pretty thrifty shoppers. Think of it that way. In normal times, our decision process that we go through to decide if we're going to buy or not buy or test or not buy, if we're going to ask a friend or do it now. Do it now. Same thing. Uh, don't drop your guard. Still try to remain logical as you make these decisions of things to do. So this is one of the things that's on our website, which I'll, it's under fraud alerts. I put this out a while back. Some of you may have received it. Um, I'm going to go into just one of these here right now. And then, and then the other two, I'm going to kind of cover some other stuff. But this is a very simple kind of a USA Today kind of um, spotlight on some of the things that we're seeing during COVID. These are old scams. These are old types of fraud. But the unemployment and job offer scams, uh, you can see, you can very quickly read right there, you know, kind of what, what does that look like and how you can empower yourself. It's kind of a given. Then you have the, the coronavirus or COVID, robocalls and texts, we're all getting those. I'm going to show you where most of these calls are coming from, which may really scare you um, upon me sharing, but you probably already know, uh, which is from old data breaches. I'm going to go into detail on that. But the investment scams is another big one, especially with like COVID right now, um, there's a lot of small stock cop uh, um, stocks popping up, these micro cap stocks. These are very small ones that there's very little information on for you to research, but you're getting solicitations about this is the next best thing, it's gonna cure, it's gonna help, you gotta invest now, get on the wagon. A lot of these, especially if there's COVID in it, um, in the name, uh, are, are fraudulent. And so there's this pump and dump scheme where they're, they're promoting, they're promoting, they're promoting. You can't go anywhere to really see what the prospectus looks like and what have you. And then you jump in and they ramp it up. And then these fraudsters um, do a pump and dump as they, they pump it up, they pull their own shares out. It's already elevated and then they profit and you really have nothing. So once again, it's doing the due diligence and researching, second guessing what's in front of you with investment scams. So here's another one, 
three more things, phishing emails and communications I'll cover, but this is, these are messages that are coming in to US government, supposedly US government entities. Um, they're just coming in, they're unsolicited, they're unknown, they're just, you know, they're coming into your text, they're coming into your email, you're getting these calls, you're getting these recordings. Um, I mentioned the charity co-funding scams. The best thing to do, like I said, is, is to go to the, the Colorado Secretary of State's website and look up a, a charity that you may be interested in and see if they're in operation, if they're legit um, or not. So it's nice to give, but make sure you're giving to something that's real and where your, your dollar, um, your savings is going to be actually utilized for, for, for good things or for a benefit. Big websites and social media posts. Once again, you can, so I'm talking, kind of glance through just some quick pointers on each of these. And these are, everything I'm showing you here, these are PDFs that are on the site. So you could actually go to the site and print these off if, if you would like to, or keep them as a soft digital copy. So here's another one, but here I'm gonna expand a little bit just on uh, false government, financial entities. I've got another sheet behind this one, but really right here that there are, we've been getting them. Uh, it could be IRS, it could be Social Security Administration. A lot of financial institutions, supposedly, are reaching out, offering assistance or maybe grants to these troubling times. Because once again, remember, unemployment's pretty high right now. A lot of people have lost their jobs. And so these criminals are reaching out, pretending to be these entities, you know, even auto lenders. And a, a new alert that I'm about to push out in a couple of weeks is on fraud with mortgage elimination groups or foreclosure scams. Because a lot of people, because of the downturn, are struggling in that space. And these criminals know how to take advantage, pretending to be there to help, but they're there to harm and to benefit themselves. Um, fake government messages telling people that they're proof for money. You know, a good rule through all this stuff is something, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So there's a lot of just things that just sound too darn good right now that are being pushed out there to people in the district and across the state and elsewhere. Um, but this bottom point is what is important here is that these ID thieves, they're using personal information. A lot of the stuff that they have, if you've gotten a call or a message or what have you, and, and there's something in it that's true, there's a good chance that you've been part of a data breach, maybe two, three, four years ago. And it's just surfacing because these breaches, this stuff floats around, as I'll show you, for a long time. You can stay on a list on the dark web for a long time. So people are getting these, you know, solicitations and it's got part of the, a password that they use or it's got part of their pers some personal financial information in it. So with the job and a work at work at home scams, it's always been out there. It hits, it hits the young, it hits the old. Uh, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. And again, we've been home a lot with the downturn. It's good to make a little extra money. You know, kids are looking to make extra money. But there's a lot of crap out there where these, these are coming in and, and people are taking advantage of it. A lot of times it sounds too good to be true. And sometimes with these work at home scams, I mean, you may have converse, if you, if you go that route, you may have conversations with these scammers, these, these um, um, employment companies, you know, maybe for weeks and they're feeding you information, they're popping you up, you're excited. Lots of times where the fraud happens is they're asking you to pay something. They're asking you to pay to be able to get a job. So they're asking you to pay a fee, they're asking you to pay to get certified, they're asking you to pay for supplies or whatever, and then you, you, you do it, and then they come right back the next day, you know, one or two days later, it's like, well, there's something else you gotta pay for, and you make these payments, and then nothing comes, and then they're gone, they're just gone. So like I said, it hits, it hits a lot of the young, it hits a lot of the old, it hits everybody in the middle, but you should never have to pay to get a job. You should, have, should not have to pay to get certified, pay for supplies and all that stuff. And a lot of these are coming in by text and emails. There are a lot of fraudulent job placement companies out there. And the other thing that's kind of a, a red flag is even though they may talk to you for, you know, on several conversations, 
there's always a sense of urgency. Once again, across a lot of these different types of fraud, when, it, when you're being pushed and you got to do it now, either it's going to miss out, this opportunity is short lived, or you, it's a threat. Like if you don't pay this fine now, then you're going to get a, there's going to be a warrant out for your arrest. When you start hearing all that, if you're still talking to them and listening to them, you hang up, you, 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 you walk away because nothing is, has to be that, that urgent. That sense of urgency is where people will trip and um, find themselves in harm's way. So this is, once again, another one that I, I put out just recently. I put this out in the first newsletter, which I'll talk about later. Um, just started a new newsletter, but this one went on the last one. Basically right here, the better, you can read this, the, better, the BBB released a study just this past July, about 44% of Americans have encountered some type of uh, government imposter scam. I get them. I got a call the other day. You know, I don't ever answer a call if I don't know the number. I just don't. If it's important, they'll leave a message and then I may listen to it. But you, we've all gotten these recordings if you've taken that route. And the message, you listen to it and the first part of the message is gone. It's a sense of urgency. You know, there's a warrant out for my arrest unless I do this or that. And I got to call this number or it could be an email or a text. These are, everyone's getting these. Everyone is getting these. And then again, once again, this can stem from small data breaches, but, but, but also there's a lot of public information out there. It's not because of breaches. There's just stuff out there that these data brokers that are, you know, that some are legit, a lot aren't, but they have information that can be bought. And then there's plenty of information on government sites, for example, that a scammer that's good and trained as these are, and it could be a call center out of India, it could be out of Costa Rica, Jamaica, here domestically, they have enough to sound legitimate. They know something about you and they know enough about the role that they're playing. So this is a big one right now, government imposter fraud. Common characteristics, people are getting through robocalls, they're also getting it through text and email. If you don't already know this, the IRS will never call you. They will not text you. They will not email you. They will communicate with you through the U.S. Postal System. Social Security Administration, same thing. They're not going to come at you those other ways. Now, if, you have a, if you've been working with them and they have a file, there's a caseworker or something like that, that's different. But they're not going to come at you that way. That's a flag ignore it, walk away. Some cases, it's probably good to report it, but often, because there's so much of it, you walk away. Sense of urgency, um, they're threatening. They do, they get on there and we're gonna come get you. We're gonna, we're gonna suspend, we're gonna freeze your social security payments unless you do this or that. Um, we just need to verify. They may have a little bit of information they want you to verify their, you know, the, the rest of it. Um, sometimes they're just farming. Farming is where someone actually does target you and they may target you for about a year and they just build, they, they gradually through different angles will build, gain more and more information on you, on you until they have enough to really be threatening for financial gain on their end or something like that. So, um, once again, this is all, this is, this is organized crime. Um, just be aware of it. Most of us don't fall prey to it, but, but I, I do get a lot of people that call up and say, I, I knew better, got the call, got the email, and they said, call this person. Keep this in mind with any of these types of scams. If you actually click on a link, and there may be malware, some, a virus or whatever, maybe not, but if you click on a link, or if you actually answer the phone and start talking to the person, you need to know that these organized cells, this type of organized crime, you were put into a new category in that very dark space that you were someone that has the potential to be um, scammed. And they will share your name with other entities that they kind of partner with and it just doesn't end. Because I have a lot of people say, well, I just, I picked up the phone and I just told them what I wanted to say and I'm, I've had it and this is, you know, don't ever call me again. I just want to give them a piece of my mind. Well, when you do that, you make them happy. 
because they maybe they didn't get you then, but you're you're a celebrity in their world. So don't give them a piece of your mind. Don't give them any attention. Um, often you need to report it. And I can show you ways that you can do that locally, but also through the FBI side and with the FTC. This is a big one. I, I really, I, I think you should definitely pull this one off of uh, the website. This is a big deal. I would say about 50% of the calls that I've been getting over the last few months deal with homeowner contractor fraud. So I've been talking about you know, government imposters. Uh, I'm gonna get into some other things, but another area where there's a lot of fraud and theft is with these contractors. And most contractors are good people. They're legitimate businesses. There's some bad apples and right now, and it's, it's all over. There's some really bad ones and they're taking a lot of money and not providing services or material. Um, or they're doing a little bit poor performance and then they just disappear and the project is done. It's not completed. There's a lot going on and we, we have several groups in the district, the different counties that have had a lot of people. There, there's one group, hailstorms that came in. And as I'm talking, look at these common complaints right here. Remember all the hail we had back in 19? A lot of people got hit pretty hard, a lot of damage. So there were a lot of companies, some went door to door, don't ever, don't, don't respond to those types of solicitations. Others came in kind of you know, legitimate. But a lot of people signed on to have their roofs, their roofs, um, you know, repaired, and so a lot of money was taken up front. And most of these homes, especially, especially with this one group, it's the time of the year that it is now, and no work has been done. And people will put down fifteen thousand dollars, they put eighteen thousand dollars down. But this is a two-page fraud report right here. Um, it talks about the advisory. It talks about common complaints, which you see right here. One of the biggest indicators, and I'll go to this next page, um, big tip right here, one of the biggest red flags is if you hire somebody on and then you find out that the employees, subcontractors, subcontractors or suppliers, you find out that they haven't been paid, that's a big red flag. Definitely with roofing, there's certain, um, uh, statutes in there that the money can only go to um, it should, but the money is always supposed to go just to what the service is supposed to be provided is and roofing there's more there's, there's the legs are stronger and have that enforced so the contractor should not be taking your money to pay for other projects or or um, things outside of, of, of your yard, of your fence, of, of your house, the roof or whatever. And, but a lot of people, they jump right in, they don't ask for a contract or they, they don't go through the contract with the company to make sure it's in favor of the contractor and themselves. A lot of people don't get two to three bids. What I had up well, these recommendations, you need to get two to three bids. Uh, I'm not, um, criticizing like Home Advisor, but they're a great company. There's one, they're, they're big enough, they could, have, they could have their name on the Bronco Stadium. They do a good job, but not everybody in there is legitimate or um, does good business. And so you need to, you know, you need to do your homework, make, make sure that they are, are licensed, um, that, that they can pull a permit. It kind of depends what it is. But uh, I, and there's a new neighborhood, there's a new neighborhood in the Parker area. I've forgotten the name. I have about two or three individuals. Supposedly there's about 10. The landscaping hasn't been done yet. So the irrigation systems have to be put in and fences and someone has come in and is um, already collected money to do these services for all these new residents and is nowhere to be found at this point. And there's very little often there's very little recourse that can be taken to to recover there is recourse in contractor fraud um, most people most law enforcement will say it's a civil matter it's a civil matter well contractor fraud it's civil and it's also criminal and sometimes it can be very heavy criminal like if you pay and no materials and no services been, been performed that's criminal 
But when you get into a partial pay, partial performance, that's different. And then, you know, um, other types of actions need to take place. But contractor fraud is huge right now. It's happening down in El Paso County. It's happening on the Western Slope. I was interviewed by uh, uh, Fox 31. It's just, it's, there's a lot going on because more and more people are staying home and they're doing more home projects. They're, they're, they're renovating and they're building office spaces. There's this thing like things like old hell damage and what have you. So just, I would go to that advisory and look at it and share it. It's a good piece. And there's a lot of good tips there that can save you a lot of frustration, um, time and money. So with on the contractor thing right there, um, if you believe you're a victim of crime, yes, you file a police report on it. We do work with the law enforcement agencies um, in matters of the, the contractor fraud. And it just kind of depends once again, how civil, how criminal, um, but a breach of contract, you know, it, it is addressed in a civil lawsuit. And if it's a really big project, get an attorney involved just to look over the contract. And if you're putting in a lot of money for a whole new roof or a big project, get an attorney involved to make sure that you're protected. Big switch right here. Um, I put out two of these recently. This one is um, preventing youth scams. So, so our kids, our kiddos out there, and this goes all the way up into folks in their 20s, <clears throat> the younger population actually experiences more fraud than the senior population does. And a lot of people think that seniors are the biggest target. Well, they are a pretty big target for a lot of things, but more kids are exposed to scams and losses than the, the older. The difference is the older population has more discretionary income, so they tend to lose more money. Um, but we love our kids. Uh, we, we, we love the young, but you know, they're, they're very vulnerable. They're, there's still a lot they don't know. They're very trusting. They're inexperienced in a lot of ways. They, they definitely want to fit in uh, in so many ways. And they share a lot of information. They share way too much information. They share passwords. They share stuff that shouldn't, a lot of things that shouldn't be shared. And uh, it can lead to a lot of hardships for the kid and also it can the parents. And here's some of the big areas right here. Education, uh, you know, scholarships and grants. Uh, college is expensive. I have kids. Uh, it's expensive. And there's some fraudulent companies out there. Um, these are bogus scholarship programs. You have a kid, maybe mom and dad, or one of them lost a job during this downturn, and they want to do what they can. To, they want to go to college, and they want to you know, be able to help out. So maybe they're driving this. And you have a criminal on the other side that's providing fraudulent information. Um, therefore, the kid is giving sensitive personal financial information out or possibly paying a fee or something like that, and then there's a loss. Acting and modeling scams is a big one. That's a scary one. Um, parents should definitely uh, be attentive in, in that space. I talked about employment. Our kids, we, we all do more now, but, but the kids definitely buy a lot of things online, and there are a lot of bogus sites out there. And if a deal seems too good to be true, I can, I can guarantee you a kid is going to, they're going to share that with one of their friends pretty fast. Like you wouldn't believe how much this, this bag or these pants or this or, or whatever, you can't believe the steal that I got and they pass it on. And the scammers love that because they can get in a social circle, they can hit a lot of people in a very short period of time online purchases. What kid can survive without a cell phone? I have not met one here in 2020 that can survive without a cell phone. And so, and they all tend to, to exceed the data. So these fraudulent companies, cell phones call up and they're offering more data and other packages. How, you know, kids aren't gonna say no. Money, uh, false investment and money transfers, this is scary. It, it, it's pretty common for someone to call out of the blue um, here with, with a kid and just say, hey, you know, I, I just I want to sweepstakes or something really good has happened, but I need, you know, I, I found you and I'd like to, to work with you. Can I feed some transactions, some checks? 
to an account that you may have. Um, and then we'll just kind of send it out. I got to send it to an agent or I got to send it to uh, somebody else. But, you know, they convince them to use their accounts and they'll get a cut. They'll get, they'll get paid for opening up their accounts. Well, maybe it's their savings account. But then again, lots of times a kid is on an account with their parent. And then suddenly all this sensitive information is exposed. If a kid does open up their account like that, they can be charged um, in the crime as well because it, it is a crime to run money that way. Contest promotions, there's a lot of romance scams. That's another big one I'm about to put out there for everybody. Uh, it's scary. There's some really, uh, a lot of people that aren't who they say they are and they can pull you or you're on a very public side, they can pull you off to something that's more private and where they're protected and then a lot of bad things can happen financially or more. Um, and then down at the bottom, the cyberbullying, uh, things such as that, that scares me. There, there has been an increase with that. Once again, at the top, you know, kids are pretty vulnerable. They're trusting, they want to fit in. There's a lot of opportunities to, you know, to hurt online. So. so here's some of the other things, and then I'm going to get into shift gears a little bit and get into some of the data breach um, and all that. But here's some other things that we're seeing. Uh, a lot of you have probably heard about the, the debit cards uh, that were rolling out to people for unemployment benefits. There, we had somebody in Parker, um, Parker PD may have been involved in this, but but they received 19 uh, unemployment insurance checks all to their house. Every every card, uh, I mean card, had a different person's name on, but it had their address. And that is a result of an old data breach. That's how that happened. So we've seen a lot of that extortion. There was something going around a while back. Uh, people were receiving an email that had their, their ID or password in the, in the uh, subject line of an email. So it led them to think, well, this is some, something that I do, somebody that I, that I know, because my password's in there. Maybe it's an old one, but it's, or maybe it's current. So they, so they go into the email and then there's this extortion saying, well, <clears throat> we have accessed all the contacts in your phone. We've accessed all your Facebook contacts. Um, we have access, we have control of your camera on your laptop. We've installed malware on your system. We see that you've gone to appropriate internet sites. We've seen you do through your camera. We've seen you do inappropriate things with yourself. So if you don't pay us $2,000 in Bitcoin in 24 hours, we will release all that's improper on you to your network of friends. Well, thankfully, everybody that called me, none of them actually went any further and did. They weren't threatened by it, but they did report it, which is what they needed to do. Um, it's extortion. Um, gift cards, the newsletter I'm going to send out tomorrow, there's a, there's a, a bit on uh, gift card scams. But... We've had several situations where someone of authority, uh, we, we had a, a, a minister in, in Castle Rock, we had a priest uh, in, in Douglas, that <laughs> the one in Douglas actually, the, the, the email came to the DA, George Brockler, <laughs> and said, George, this is, you know, father, so, so and so. I'm at a conference. I wouldn't normally reach out to you this way, but there's people that are hurting in the community. I need you to go out and buy some gift cards. Here's, you know, like 10 gift cards for this amount so we can get them out to them. You know, I'll pay you back. You know, uh, I just, I can't do this right now, but you got to hurry and do this because I want to get it out by this, this day. Well, DA George Brockwood didn't fall for it, nor did the minister down in Castle Rock, but, and it was, it was very obvious that this was fraudulent, and um, but once again, <clears throat> notific you know with the the one in Castle Rock, because other people will receive that also from the minister, they had to send out an alert to all the uh, folks in the in the parish um, community to say if you see anything like this, then please don't fall for it. But if, if the minister or someone of authority is is saying go do this, a lot of people jump on it. Charity scams, home rental, tech support. This is. Tech support is a big one, especially for the uh, folks over 65 and with COVID, you know, like a lot of you may watch this or who are watching this tonight, if you're, if you're not up to speed and you, and you want to 
to make sure you're secure, you know, these fraudulent tech support groups are, 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 are calling in and say they can help you to get up to speed and, and you just have to give them access to your, to your laptop, which they do remotely. Or suddenly you'll get an email that says you've been hacked and this is Microsoft support, call us immediately and we can help you resolve this. Well, Microsoft doesn't do that. But I had someone the other day um, that fell for it. And he, it, these folks were clearly from India. And once again, India is a big hub for fraudulent uh, centers. And they had them on for 30 minutes and they made it look like they were doing something. They didn't do anything. And it, it was never really fully hacked anyway. And then they said, this is gonna be $500. And then they asked him to pay in a very ways that you would not normally pay. He did. Um, lost $500 and he also through the course of 30 minutes gave out a lot of um, information that no one else really needs to have so Poppy we have one quick question <clears throat> yeah 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 Richard and, are you there yeah I'm here okay go ahead go with your go. question yeah hi uh, James um, you see these things on TV about home title theft yes say that yes. you know of course they want to sell you the the deal there but uh, you've run into anything where people's titles have been installed? So I've actually gotten a few calls. And, and the reason people are calling is they, they saw the commercial. They saw the ad. Like, nothing had happened to them, but, but they called. And, and listen, I get a lot of calls from folks that just want an explanation. You know, I get a lot where something's happened, but some people help me to understand. So I have gotten that and from that from a few people, uh, this, this, uh, title lock company there it's a legitimate company it's an insurance group and this is their this is their niche and all they're looking to do is they pay a fee and they'll monitor you know your deed from time to time to make sure that it's safe well in reality is <clears throat> you can go to the assessor's office in your own county and do the same thing and it's not as once again, it's the marketing that they're doing in the ad, trying to, to scare people. Well, you know, there's, there's cosmetics and beauty products and trying to make us feel insufficient. Same thing. So it's, it's not that easy. I mean, anything is attainable, but um, you can go in and check and, and then rarely would you be, um, would that be snatched, you know, from you. And if it was, you would be able to recover it. What, where it becomes different, and I'll hi highlight in that upcoming advisory of like for foreclosure scams, if someone's in the verge of foreclosure, and one of these investors or companies will call the individual and say, well, we can help you with your payments. And what, what they do is they convince them to actually turn over the deed. So this is different. To turn over the deed to them or put it in their name and that way the mortgage company or the creditors aren't coming after the homeowner and they say, well, we'll manage your payments for you, but you pay us directly and we'll have all the conversations with the lender. And what they do, it gets transferred into their name and then maybe the homeowner is paying rent while they rebuild their credit for like a year. And what actually happens is that the scammer is really not doing anything to help them. Often they will then sell it to a straw investor. Um, the, you know, the deed and then equity will build and they'll benefit from that. And then when it, the, the homeowner's credit may get better, maybe, maybe not, they try to get their house back, they raise the rent or they won't give them the deed back. And often what happens is they end up losing the house or on the mortgage elimination groups that they're trying to help. Um, they just promise to do all the discussions with the bank um, and they really don't do anything. And then you fall behind on your mortgages and then you end up losing the house. So it's really that type of scenario versus someone coming in and snatching your, your deed. But that, that is a legitimate company. I've looked, I've, I've researched it. I looked it up. You know, they're just trying to make a buck legitimately. They're just an insurance group. So um, hopefully that answers your question. I, I, you, you should feel a little at ease over that. Um, but anything's possible, but that's, it's, it's not as common as they make it sound. There are a lot of fraudulent puppy and cat adoption homes or, or puppy mills, whatever. A lot of people want to get a pet right now because they're at home. What a better time to train 
a dog or a cat. I mean, only train a cat, but a dog. And there's a lot of just bogus um, places out there to, to purchase. And what they do is that they, they put these stock photos up of, of animals on their website. And, and you can Google how to Google search an image to see if it's posted elsewhere on the web. You can just Google it and it'll tell you how to do that. But it looks legitimate and then you pay money up front and they say they're gonna you know, give it to you. But then they say, well, because of COVID, there's so many things because of COVID, we can't meet, so we're gonna have to ship it. So you gotta pay more money to have it shipped. And oh, by the way, you need a special kind of cage for us to ship this animal in and so the people pay for it. And then no, the puppy never comes. But there's a lot of those. In fact, at the last quarterly Better Business Bureau uh, Colorado meeting, um, I was at, that was a big one. They highlighted that. There's, there's a lot of people losing money over the, the puppy um, and cat. Retail online purchase is a big one. Sweepstakes, prize, uh, prizes. Um, usually it's something you never entered and then you get this call like you won, but you got to pay a fee to get it. It's just, don't fall for that. Uh, even, even if things are tough, you know, you just, usually it's something you have, it's just, it's out of the blue. I think a lot of us are familiar with grandparent scams where a family, like a grandchild's calling up and stress and urgency, you need to send money and it's usually fraudulent. See that song with, with service, um, people in the service as well, it's a big one. Uh, I talked about, I'm gonna put something on the dating. It's, um, it can be pretty scary out there. Some bad people um, who will farm you and then get more and more, more and more information, a lot of, a lot of money is lost through dating scams. You know, we're, we're a species that likes connection, right? And we, the presence of another person can be, can be wonderful. And, you know, and then suddenly there's somebody on the other side that's who you've, you know, looking for your whole life. Maybe you're a widow or a widower or could be somebody younger as well. But um, it's easy to hook a lot of people in that space. Uh, wage theft is a big one. That'll be in the newsletter that goes out tomorrow. And then some other stuff here. But, but the common denominator, and this is where I'm going to get into, and I'll answer some more questions right here, but the big thing right here, the reason a lot of this stuff happens is that there's this from data breaches and identif identification theft. That is the root cause of where a lot of your information is um, put out there and the reason their folks are calling you. So... So as I move into that, and there's some good stuff, and I'll, I'll go kind of quickly, a lot of it you may know. Are there any questions just on what we're seeing? These have been around forever. It's just, they're just upping their game. And um, but where, where it does kind of become different is just at the advances in, in technology, you know, so it, as good as law enforcement is, is suppressing and minimizing a lot of these things on a larger level. And, I, and, I, and you know, we do a lot locally. Parker does a lot. Littleton does a lot. We do a lot. And a lot of these things, reporting the fraud, it goes on to the FBI and the FTC, where they have the greater resources and the data to really see, you know, where it's coming from and they're able to, to suppress. But as good as we are in law enforcement and we are winning, I get that question, we are winning. We get ahead and then they catch up and we get ahead and then they catch up because they're skilled at what they do and technology makes things easy. Okay. Doesn't look like we have any questions just yet, but I'll, I'll pop in if we do. Okay. And... Uh, my uh, screen froze. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. So the dark web. Uh, that may sound comical, but it but it it is a real term and it is a real thing. There is a thing called the dark web, and to kind of help to explain what this is, or actually help you to understand what the internet looks like, is. So there's the surface web, and this is where we spend most of our time. This is only about 4% of the web. This is where you're, you know, you're going to Google and you're searching, whatever it may be, you're, you're shopping, you're, it's YouTube, it's Twitter, it's the surface web, 
it's the fun place to be. It's where you, what you're doing. Hopefully not when you're at a stoplight. This is what you're doing when you have downtime. The deep web <clears throat> is legitimate and that's 90% of it. This is where all the commercial search engines are. This is where the banking information it passes through you know, with uh, um, addresses and passwords and just you know, the sensitive information, educational records, all that. That's, that's the bulk of the internet right there. That's, that's that true web. <clears throat> But the 6% that's left, this is the dark web. And this is the, the subset of, as you can see right here, internet consisting of hidden, hidden networks. These are the crooks, the bad folks. This is when your information is breached. This is where it's, it's sold. This is where it's manipulated. Um, this, is where the, you know, this is where the crimes come from because uh, this is where the criminals are. Okay, so it's, there's the breakout of it. It's just a little bit of trivia. So this you may want to write down. Um, it's worth going to. It's kind of scary to go to. This is a legitimate site. It still are data breaches. It's called Have I Been Pawned? And it, there is not an A in pond, but it's haveibeenpawned.com. If you put this in, and go and you put you go here and you put your email address in and it will tell you how many times your email has been breached. So I did it a while back. I've been breached eight times. LinkedIn is something that I have been a big part of over the years on the business side of my you know, my career. Uh, LinkedIn is um, is a great space and a lot of there's a lot of good on LinkedIn. It was breached back in 2016. Uh, the software program that my kids use at school, but they were all iPad. It was the, the primary software. It was exposed a couple years ago. My fitness pal has been exposed. Google's been, ex has been breached. Target's been breached. A lot of medical um, companies have been breached. There's a lot of breaches. So if you put your email in there, snap of a finger, it's gonna pop up and show where your email has been exposed, what's been breached, and it'll tell you what type of information was released. So you really should do this so you know, and like I said, some of these calls and solicitations are because of some of your information may have been exposed out um, in the dark web at one point or another. In a few slides, further slides, I'll show you just how much each, each bit of your information is worth on the dark web. There's a monetary value uh, to different parts of your information. So. Once again, if you haven't written down, you don't have to, I would, I would, I would look, I would look and see. It's just have I been pawned without an A.com. <clears throat> so identity theft. So, so a lot of your identity can be exposed during breaches. There's other ways that um, theft of your information can, can occur. So here's financial transactions, de devices are compromised. This is where, so, the devices like checks and credit cards, you know, checks can be stolen. Uh, mailboxes very much so are being broken into these days that they always have. It's pretty high right now. I'm gonna cover that in a minute. I know so many things are <laughs> future slides, but they do. And, and, and a lot of people still use checks and they, they're in mailboxes and they get stolen. So it, for checks, it's always best to have them sent to your bank and then you pick them up there. Credit cards are skimmed, you know, the ATMs, the gas pumps. I'll talk about that. Um, they're compromised. It's more often than you think. Uh, financial uh, identification information is compromised. You know, here, some of your financial information, like a pen, uh, email addresses, or what have you. Sometimes they're able to get these just through a simple data read. Sometimes, like I said, they'll farm. They'll pick you out. There's relevance in farming you to to because you could be a big score. And then you know at some point there's enough information there obtained to access your savings or checking or set up an IRA or 401k or lines of credit are never good, um, but they can do that and it happens and these losses can be huge. And often, as it says right here, it's kind of hard to prove that you're the victim um, when this stuff happens. Uh, lots of times banks will write stuff off. They have the deep pockets and they'll do that, but sometimes they don't. But then again, 
And your information, if this happens, is out there. If one has it, they can sell your information off to somebody else and they'll come at you. And there could be a four year gap between you experiencing ID theft. It just, it just doesn't go away very easily. So here's PII is personal identifying information. This is the core information about you. It's compromised. One of the worst things that you can have leaked out there, and it, it does happen, is a social security number. Um, but a driver's license number can be obtained, a date of birth, stuff like this. And once again, people can create a, um, create a financial gain for themselves by using your information. So don't carry your social security card with you in your purse or your wallet. Don't carry your Medicare if you have it in your wallet or your, um, your purse either. You, you, you don't need them on you. And if that is lost, it's just, it just makes it way too easy for, for bad things to happen, okay? There's ID theft and there's criminal impersonation. ID theft, it states it right here. Someone who uses the personal, the PII, the financial identifying information or uh, financial device without permission to uh, obtain a financial benefit or make a payment. Criminal impersonation is people use your information um, they impersonate you for to get out of something or uh, you know for their benefit as well it's it's not uncommon where a police officer may pull somebody for speeding and the person they pull has obtained other you know someone else's information and so they give that information to the police officer they give your information to the police officer and then suddenly a month or so down the road, you're getting stuff in the mail because you didn't pay a fine, you didn't show up for court, but why, why would you? You didn't know about it. Someone else is impersonating you. And here it talks about the different types of felonies um, for each. So here in the 18th, this is kind of who is really utilizing uh, the ID theft. Um, there are a lot of organized like I said, organized crime here, I've talked about abroad, there, there's plenty of it here. There's a lot of drug rings um, that are obtaining this type of information to help them run their business. Um, and the selling of drugs and maybe manufacturing or what have you. Um, financial fraudsters, you can see it here and how this is how they're doing it. They're, they're, there's the mail theft, there's the purse, there's the breaking in the homes or skimmers, data breaches. And so really, show you so that here's some of the methods right here and you can see at the top this is the most controllable and then the least and as i'm going through all this stuff i mean there i want you to feel empowered that there's so much that you can do as an individual to minimize or prevent these things from happening now a data breach please understand you can't do anything about that a lot of it kind of i see there's a question but a lot of it falls back on that that company that was breached um, and sometimes they, it's unavoidable, you know, there, but so much you are in control of. So think about it. One of the more controllable would be, um, taking care of your purse or billfold, uh, making sure that it's not in the passenger seat of the, of your car or easily snatched. Think about the mail. So Brie asked me to point this out and I am going to take your question. Um, the Shredathon, the Shredathon, do it because dumpster diving, for example, is is still very real. And and with the downturn, the economy would have you people are going through trash, and they're breaking into mailboxes, whether individual mailboxes or the community ones, they're ripping the bags off. And there's a lot, just a lot of these solicitations in, in the mail they can they can do things with. So just recognize that don't leave stuff in the mailbox for a long time you stick if you have a mailbox that has a flag that goes up that just says please come open me and take what's in here telemarketing fraud trash vehicles and all the way down the the, the least controllable is the id theft which happens in businesses and data breaches so so on the question he's just asking if the slides will be available after the presentation I can make, I can make it available. Yep. 
We also have this um, recording, so we're going to present this again at a later date on our social media pages in all likelihood. So we can make that the recording of this available if that helps as well. Okay. So yes, I mean, it's, hey, we're, we're here to serve you and we're on the same team. Um, the DA's office with law enforcement and with each of you, we're all on the same team. We all can and do help, help one another. So the best I can do, um, the best I can do is, is to help you to be more proactive and preventative and expose you to things that are going on and, and how you can, can minimize or step away from. So, so that's a good question. And I, I was gonna share that at the end, but yeah, it's gonna be available to you. So once again, come steal me. It's a big one. Skimming is very real. Back uh, about two, three months ago, example, I think everyone has driven on 470 over by Morrison. There's a gas station at the Morrison exit before you go into the town in Red Rocks. They pulled nine skimmers off the gas pumps. They were only up there for a couple of days. They pulled nine skimmers off these machines. And now these skimmers, which basically it's like a sleeve, um, used to, you could, you could spot it. Um, it's kind of on the outside. But if you put your card in, it reads it. And so now the technology is better. But they pulled these off um, pretty quickly. And with the, and the gas pumps now, um, what I'm being told is now the information is being downloaded that's obtained uh, via Bluetooth. So before they'd have to go back in and get like a flash drive or something like that, now it's, it's Bluetooth. So just a, so you're not gonna know it's there. And, but the technology, the newer pumps are getting better and better. Um, what I was gonna say is it's always a good idea, especially like a, at a gas station, to use a credit card versus a debit card because of um, if you have to file a claim, um, the credit side is, you know, is a, is a lot, is a lot easier. So. Um, Amy, we had a question about this. Um, DZ, do you want to ask your question? I just don't understand. So we, we don't even know this is happening. This, this machine or this skimmer, we walk up and. Yep. Yeah, it's so once again, you know, you know how the card goes in and beforehand it was all, it was like a little sleeve that was kind of on the out. It went in it, but it was kind of on the outskirts and it just, it would read your card as it went in, but the machine would read it too. And then they would take that information. They've pulled cameras out of, you know, the ATMs that have been in like a brochure um, holder or whatever. So they, they, they read your, your transactions. Um, so they're out there. I mean, the technology is getting better. Banks are open their security. I'm being told like the safest pumps right now are the King Super pumps and the Costco pumps because they have some of the, the, the newest technology. Um, they have sensors, a lot of pumps now that can detect if there's something in a machine. But this is, yeah, this is, this is happening. This is, this is real. So it's, it's happening here in Parker. It, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, we're winning. They, you know, they, they do what they do. Um, and we pull them and they may, you know, may surface somewhere else. But, and it won't always be this way. But, yeah, but then again, now you've got cars that have the chips. So, so with chip technology, so, so I need to step back. With the chip technology, um, there's added safeguards there. Eventually the chip will not be effective. They'll be, you know, another level of, of, of security with, with using, you know, cards and all that. But um, it is, it's, it's real. But I, there was, this is different, but it just shows how easily they're able to tap in and, and read things. So there was a, there was, there were texts that were going out several months ago to a lot of people from Target. Target was saying, you know, with, with the pandemic, you know, we're here for all of you. This is, these are hard times. We're giving you $175 in free groceries from your nearest Target store um, to help you along. And so just click here. And what happened is when, when the person, if they chose to do it and they clicked on that link, what happened on the phone, it installed um, um, basically some malware in there 
that allowed at that point, then they were able to read your touch strokes on your phone. So when you were putting in, so then when you put in passwords or things like that, they were able to the software that was installed because they pushed on that link to read your touch strokes. Scary. So, but you know, there, once again, too good to be true, unsolicited, it's just coming into your, you know, to as a text, ignore it, delete it. Don't, don't click on it. So are there, it looks like there's some other questions, Bree. Okay. Um, phishing. We've, I think we've all heard of this. We get these emails that come in. A lot of them look legitimate. Uh, here's like an example with eBay. I was just talking about the target thing. Sometimes the logo is on there. It's just, it's easier to lift those things. But right here it says, you know, never click on this. It's just, you have to, ver we get them all the time. Verify your information to unsuspend or whatever. You click on it and then malware's downloaded or a virus or you've just given up some information. Um, ID theft over the phone. I've talked about this. You should do it. Use your voicemail to block or screen calls. You can actually block calls. But if you don't know the number, because a lot of numbers are spoofed, it's, it's, it's a fake. It's not the real number, but it's coming to you saying it's something that's in your, your, your uh, contact list. Um, so you can't always catch it, but you do, you know, you need to block and screen the calls. Uh, do not call registry. Obviously don't talk to people on the phone. Um, it says right here, you know, they're not, they're not calling to wish you a good day. These are, you know, these are scammers that are calling hundreds of people every day and seeing who they can get. And they're throwing these fish nets out to see who they can catch. And like I said, if you sometimes if just by clicking out, by answering it or responding, then you become a favorite in that dark space and you get passed around from entity to entity. So. Jamie, we've got a comment from Richard. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, um, on the uh, skimming of the uh, credit card, et cetera. Okay. Um, I know I have it on my bank that I set up um, alerts from the bank, like anything over $50. Yes. Um, I, I get an alert. Uh, if, I, if, the, if the card's used at a, a gas pump, uh, I'll be at Costco. And as soon as I put that, my credit card in and take it out, I get an alert that a transaction was occurred at a gas yep. station. And also for international uh, transactions, um, yeah. something from Canada, I'll get an alert. I don't care how much it is. So those will give you a, a heads up before you really know that um, something's uh, up. It's like instantaneous. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great to have that. You know, lots of times, <laughs> sometimes it can have like they may put a, a quick freeze and then they try to contact you. Did you really want to do this? And you're trying to purchase something and it's frozen and like, oh, what a, what a big inconvenience. But these are great um, precautions that the banks, financial institutions are taking to protect us. Um, a little tip based on what you just said is, so, so we do get those. Sometimes you have to sign up to, to, to receive this. If you get a tax notifying you of a deposit or purchase like that, whatever, if that comes to you as a phone number, as a, in a tax as a phone number, that's typically fraud. Typically the way it comes, it's three numbers, dash, and three more numbers. So I know <clears throat> I'll see that with Wells Fargo, with the with the Bank of America, whatever. So look for a three number dash, three number. It's typically uh, your bank. If you get them all the time, like you are, then you know, you, you know it's it's legitimate. But sometimes a fraudulent one can come in and slip in and you're just out of habit, you click where you shouldn't have but um that's a good service to that's a good service to have um, the banks are trying to take care of us so thank you so websites so just like i, I said you know you, you you it may be habitual that you you get things like that um via text and you just you don't think anymore you just assume it's your bank but more and more we have to look at the, the details on uh, things that we're doing and here's another example right here is you really need to pay attention with the websites that you're going to. And you want to make sure it's a secure site because a lot of sites aren't and it's easy to manipulate, the, manipulate these. 
So first and foremost, you need to look at the address line up there and it needs to have HTTPS, not HTTP. You need to have HTTPS and even more so, you need to look for a lock and it needs to be a closed lock. Uh, sometimes it's gray, sometimes it's green, but having that um, HT, HTTPS and seeing the lock, sometimes you'll see a shield up there as well. That's usually a legitimate site. It's a safe, secure site to, to go to. But um, sometimes some aren't. And, and, I, and I've seen it, I've heard about it with a lot of medical providers. Like they, more and more, they're letting people pay online and you go to where they're directing you to and it says unsecure. Well, that could be a glitch, but it really could be a fraudulent site. So take the time and look for these two um, items to make sure it's a, a secure website. Spoofing. Um, emails get spoofed all the time. Uh, numbers get spoofed all the time. So what they do is they'll spoof the display name, they'll substitute, they'll transpose letters. Um, they may do an under, so examples down here do an underscore, but, but look at the second on the bottom with the examples. How easy is it to put an R and an N together and it looks like an M, right? But an R and an N is a whole different email address than an M, you know, and whatever else it's with. Uh, or lowercase, uh, uppercase L, um, and a one. And then you kind of need to look at the suffix of emails. You know, you start seeing things that may be coming from other countries. Um, you know, dot au or, or, or dot, uh, I forgot what like Russia is or whatever, but you need to pay attention to those things. Because look right here. So there's three examples, two emails in each one. And they're so subtle, but one letter, one symbol can take you to a place that you don't want to go to. So for example, you look at the bottom down there, you know, an O and a zero are different, are different, but they're close enough. You know, a lowercase L and a one look pretty much the same. So you have, or it's just something like Huckleberry Law, where there's just an extra one or lowercase L put in there, and you may not catch that, right? And then you see the John Smith, an O and a zero. It's annoying that we sometimes have to go to this level of um, checking to 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 be safe but better safe than sorry right so a lot of these things get spoofed so what you can do and you should do is anytime you hover over uh the name on an, with an email you can hover over it and it'll show you what something will pop up and you'll see what the true email is and then then you know because they can be spoofed right but if you hover over it it's going to show you the true so then you know that it, it is your sister in Virginia that's, that's e emailing you. Um, you, just, you just need to, to know for sure. If you forward versus reply, then you're gonna, so if you hit forward, then you're in more control than just the reply. Because uh, the, the reply, you could be replying to an address that, you know, you know once again, you don't, you don't wanna go there. Careful clicking, know who called who, public Wi-Fi, be careful. A lot of these international, um, messages that come in it's the grammar is just is horrible you know a lot you know it's it just is it correct is it not you know like for example in great britain for like words like for us like realize or organize like we'll use a z but there's an s um in other countries um subtle things like that can kind of tell you that you may want to look a little further um, anytime it's a sense of urgency or calling at odd times, if you get an email or a call at like 4.50 at the end of the day, definitely like a Thursday or Friday, and it's urgent, you got to do it, you got to do it, you got to do it, <clears throat> more than likely, there's fraud there that you've got somebody you don't want to be dealing with. So just take that, take, take that into consideration. Um, Facebook, social media, I'm not going to pick just on Facebook, Facebook, but, um, you really need to, you need to think about what you put out there. Most of us don't. We share, we want to share, sharing is good, but you need to think about what you put out there. Uh, a lot of the younger generation, a lot of the millennials, um, they'll accept friendships from anybody. 
I mean, they just, they just tend to do it's more friends, more friends, more friends. But think about what you put out there. A lot of us, when we have a, a new grandchild come into our lives or a child, we want to share. And, and, but what are you sharing? You know, you're, you're taking a picture of the, of the baby, but you have all these in the background, you have that you went to the University of um, South Carolina, that there's, there's just things in the background that could tell someone that's looking at you more about your life and lifestyle. Um, people that are, divor are divorcing uh, can be very bitter, can put a lot of things out there that they shouldn't, but then again, they're looking for new avenues. Um, we renovate, we we're proud of, we're excited about the new purchases and this and that, and we just put the wrong type of information out there. But think about this, and, and lots of times there's imposters that are coming in, especially via messenger, that they're coming at you as an old friend, and it's not them. It's not them. And then you strike up a conversation because you think it's Bobby from 25 years ago in your old town, and it's not. And then eventually they pull you off a messenger and you're texting or emailing, and then if it's a bad person, you can kind of be in trouble, right? Um, these Zoom calls, same thing. We're doing more and more Zoom and WebEx and, and Microsoft Teams. Think about what's in behind you. Because people that come in fraudulently and looking to farm you or find out information, they can look in the background and pick up on stuff. Think about if you were high, pretty high up in a company, maybe you're the owner of a company, and so that the target is gonna be business ID theft, or it's gonna happen through the business. But they, you're the CEO or, or HR or whatever, and um, they're coming through your Facebook page and picking up things about you. And so your name's Michael, but to all your friends, you're Mikey. And maybe your employees know you as Mikey. And then so suddenly you're the CEO and they gather this information on you. And so an email comes in, goes to the person who heads HR or accounting and you, the CEO, are asking them to do something, you know, to, to some, usually some type of sensitive information or financial. And you're like, well, it's Mikey. Well, that, yeah, it's my boss. I sure, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And then something bad happens. So you just once again, think about what you put out there. There's a lot of people watching that, that they're not who they, who you think they are, or you just don't even know they're there. Password protection. If you didn't know, this is cyber secure, National Cyber, cyber Security Awareness Month, but you should be doing this stuff year round. Uh, password protection, it's, it's crucial. Like I said, there, there are a lot of things, that, small things that you can do to protect yourself. Password is, is a very easy one and a big one to do. These are some simple tips. You've probably seen these. The, the, the big thing right here is don't reuse old passwords because if a scammer is able to access one of your accounts because they have a password, an ID or password of yours, most people reuse. So if they, if they can see other types of accounts that you have, um, if they've been successful with one, more than likely they're going to be successful in, in accessing some of your other accounts because you're a dum dum and you've used um, old information again. So don't reuse. Definitely have your financial passwords um, be different than your general purpose. Um, if you can do a two facts down here, it's two factor identification. This is a great thing. You've probably been exposed to it where you. You put in your ID password, but then you got to click on the boxes, which shows street lights or a street sign. Um, you have to do something. You have to provide your, your mother's maiden name or whatever. It may be a pain when you're doing it, but it's, it really can put a big wall up to prevent folks from, from getting in. A lot of banks now are doing the biometric, you know, where you, you go to the app on the phone for Wells Fargo or whatever and it does the facial recognition or the thumbprint, things like that are great because it's, it just puts up an even bigger wall. Online safety, kind of a given again, use the most current operating system, even on our phones, right? Um, you know, there'll, there'll be a new um, uh, upload and granted lots of times there's bugs associated with it. So we kind of wait for other, you know, so they, they launch it and then it, doesn't always work right, so we wait for others to, to expose those and, and they improve on it. But the reason you're getting the most current is because they're trying to beat out these scammers, these 
with the crime, um, glitches, make other things easier for you. But just do it on your phone, on your laptop, any device, be current, definitely install um, virus protection. Once again, don't use um, public Wi-Fi. It's just, just don't do it. Um, and once again, you know, don't click on links or open attachments from folks you don't know. Uh, just delete them. ID theft safety. Keep your credit card inside at all times. Like I said, don't don't carry your cards with you. Your Social Security, your Medicare. Uh, be very very careful um, in doing transfers, um, wire transfers, things such as that. Um, that's a big. Wire transfers and gift cards are a big area of fraud. So you just, you just need to know what you're dealing with. Um, check your credit reports regularly. Um, question everything. Delete free apps. A lot of things are free, but you're not protected um, as well as you think. But you, know, you, you definitely should, if you, if you don't already, you, know, you, you need to monitor your credit, your, um, your statements with accounts. You definitely need to check your credit report at least once a year. Even if you have to pay, go and check it um, and make sure everything is, is legitimate. Because like I said, these breaches are real and they're happening and, and often people are surprised. Warning signs. So if you're, if you're not doing that, these are some of the things that may alert you. You know, why, why is my account less than I thought it was? Because there's been withdrawals, charges you don't recognize. You're not seeing bills that you used to get. That's a big, uh-oh. Um, and don't assume it's because you just signed up to get them electronically versus paper. Just stay on top. You get calls from debt collectors for things you didn't do. Uh, I talked about go imposter government entities. Um, it is good to file your tax return timely as best you can. Other than avoiding, you know, possibly having to pay um, you know, a fine or something like that. The reason is because there's a lot of people that will file your return for you <laughs> before you do because they've, they've secured that amount of information and they'll file the report, the, the tax return before you do and they get the refund. And they're like, well, I, but I didn't file. <coughs> And I, if, if you haven't dealt with the IRS before, I mean, um, nothing is quick. So if you need to resolve a matter, it, it, it can take a while. And so it's good to file your tax returns early um, in case there's someone that's looking to do it for you. Recovering from ID theft uh, is very laborious. It, laborious. It's, it, it, it takes a long time to resolve. Like I said, your information just gets passed around and passed around and passed around. So if you do find that you've been exposed, you, there's identity theft, you need to file a police report. It's a statement of innocence. Um, you need to obviously cancel the cards. You need to do a new pens. You need to change passwords. Um, sometimes if it happens at a particular store or business, sometimes, rarely, they may work with you some level or not, um, pay for some resources you may need to, to recover. Um, just look at all your personal profiles, credit reports. Um, you may need to put a freeze on your credit report. Put a freeze on, they can't, they can't access it. So I think this is interesting. So here's what your information is worth on the dark, on the dark web. And, and I'm, I'm about done, Bree. I, I am about done. I know I'm going just a little long. Um, your social security, as important as social security is, it's worth about a dollar. Credit cards, it depends how much information they're able to obtain. Um, your passport is worth about a thousand to two thousand dollars if that's lost. Certain medical records can be worth a lot of money. Um, diplomas, driver's licenses, and stuff like that. So all your information is worth something. Like I said, it may never be utilized if it's breached, but it may. And the re this is how a lot of the data um, is purchased. Either it's one off, so it's just like one item, like a social security number. It could be purchased in bulk where there's been a batches of the same information, or it could be a bundled data, which has a mix of all different types of information on you. And um, so they, 
that it, you know, it could be purchased any, any one of these three ways and other ways. Other areas, this is scary. Child ID theft is very real. Um, you can read right here, according to Experian, one of the bureaus, um, high number of kids before they actually turn 18 have been, have been exposed to ID theft meaning their social security number was, was compromised years before and it's, it's being, people are using it to open up an account or for fraudulent purposes. It's very, very real. Um, kids are easy targets, easy, like I said before, they're 18. The bottom is disturbing lots of times. Uh, so it could be from folks that we don't know that exist out there, but lots of times it's a family member. It could be a cousin, it could be an uncle, it could be something like that, but the kid's information is being utilized. And so then they turn 18 and they're going to college, they need to get a credit card, they need to they try to get some credit, and they can't because um, they've got a bad credit, uh, they have a credit file. So one proactive thing that you can do for your grandchild or your child or whatever is if they don't have, if you go and check, and it's recommended to, to, before a kid, by the time a kid is 16, go see if they actually have a credit file. You may be surprised. But you can actually be proactive and actually establish a file for a child and then freeze it. Because they're not going to use it for a few years. Go ahead and establish and freeze it, and then it's, it's hard to touch. But it's very, very real. Someone that's deceased, no one's looking at their social security number. A lot of individuals or deceased social security numbers are tapped into and accounts are opened and fraudulent activity takes place. So I'm not gonna get into the business ID theft, but it's, it's very real. I gave you one example of, of how that can happen. Lots of times it happens within. The key thing is businesses need to set up a structure and how to protect this information because across the board and definitely with business, Identity is an asset, and so a business needs to take inventory of, of what the identity assets are. They need to assess what the value is of these. Um, you know, uh, vulnerabilities and what have you, and there needs to be an action plan should something should something happen. But business ID theft um, is pretty common. And what I didn't mention is on the data breaches. I see there's a question. I only have a couple more slides. Um, often with the data breach with a company, it can, it can take six to eight months for that company to realize that they were breached. I mean, it, it just depends on the size of the company, but in a lot of the cases, months and months go by before they realize that they were actually breached. So think about how much damage can be, can take place, um, before that time. So, so there's Amy, a question. Yeah, quick question from Ray about bank accounts for kids. Yes. Yeah, can you hear me all right? We I can. can. I can. Great. Um, so yeah, I have two elementary age kids. Um, you know, as a parent cashing the checks from family, we went ahead and did a little savings account at our bank. Okay. I've never seen a file open on them on their credit. So I'm wondering, is that enough to get that started somehow? Or do I need to like a credit card for a short term in their name or any other way to get a credit started? You can, you can check. It's a good question. I mean, there, I don't have a straight answer, you know, for you. You can, you can, um, or who would well, have the trusted, you know, answer, you know, at the bank or yeah, you can, financial you advisor. Can ask or, your financial institution. You can actually work with the different bureaus The the bureaus, um, actually are, are pretty good at being educators. There's a lot of good information with each of these bureaus on their sites. Um, Experian has a great app and it, you can, you know, you can see in real time what your score is. You can see any kind of activity. You can see your other two scores, which may be about a week or so off, but they push out information all the time to help you better protect yourself. And there's stuff in there that shows you what, there's a lot of information talking about ID theft. Like a lot of stuff that I've pulled on ID theft is coming from the three bureaus, right? Um, so you can go in there and tell you more about how to, to better protect yourself, but also how you can establish 
um, just like you're asking, um, a credit file for your child and then freeze it. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Go there. Um, anyway, businesses just, they've got to protect the information and, and speaking of protecting information and with the kids, if you're not familiar with COPA, uh, you've probably seen it before, but COPA, um, it, it's, it's how you, as a parent, it allows you to be very, um, very much in control in monitoring how your kid's information is being used or not used. The most common um, space for that is like with the schools, they have to adhere to, to, to COPA. And it's just COPPA. I would look at that and understand it and, and, and see how, um, what rights you have in protecting your kid's information um, where it's used and, and not used. But once again, that's protecting private information. So really, these last couple slides are just things that you can look out for out of the office resources that are available to you. This is our website right here. It's really easy. It's just DA18, District Attorney18, uh, .org. Okay, so there's, I mean, that's that goes beyond just consumer fraud protection. It's, it's, that's our site. Um, in there, there's, uh, you can go to the consumer fraud um, part. It's community relations and consumer fraud, and then you'll find the, the fraud alerts. So everything I've shown you, those um, alerts in, in the presentation are there. Um, I do a lot of presentations. Most of these are virtual. I've done a couple in person. I just was in front of Littleton PD doing this uh, very similar presentation with their officers and talking about what they're seeing. Um, I'm more than happy to do this presentation or other presentations for other groups that you're involved with. Um, I've done stuff for the Douglas County Seniors Council, um, doing something with uh, Castle Rock Seniors Center. Um, I like doing presentations. And, but I can also do shorter and smaller ones on other topics as well. But once again, on the consumer fraud part, I'm happy to do that. Fraud alerts, I push out community newsletter. If, if anybody would like to start receiving our, our newsletter, and it's basically consumer fraud, um, there's a lot of good juicy stuff in it. The second one is going out tomorrow. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to that, I do it through constant contact. So if you obviously opting in, it's very easy to opt out. If you want to receive that, this is parts of the first one. Uh, there's obviously a shot of Douglas County up there. It lists different resources. You see consumer resources and fraud advisories. There's links over directly to that on the site. There was a section on the contractor fraud, other um, fraud alerts that are going to go out, um, these use scams. There's a lot of good information just at your fingertips. So if you'd like to subscribe to that, um, my email is not here, but, but you, the hotline number email is this consumer at da18.state.co.us. Mine is just Jay Sorrells at DA18 State, Colorado, US. If you want to subscribe to that, you can do the consumer one here. You can do Jay Sorrells, and I will add you. And if you want to pull off at any point, do that. But that's the hotline if you have a complaint, or you think you're the victim of a crime in the space that I've covered, you can, you can call that, and I will get back to you. Um, often we're a referral unit for a lot of the other law agencies in the, in the area. We're also um, working with the FBI, the CBI, Federal Trade, Better Business. So sometimes we are getting you, helping you to, to get to where an entity that's going to be better to serve you. Um, we do have an economic crime complaint form um, where it allows everyone to put you know, in writing all the documents so we can see it like a police report so we can determine really what's going on and then that's transferable to other law enforcement, just like the police um, reports can be transferable. Once again, we're on the same team and um, you know, we're here to protect and to, to serve all of you um, on all kinds of different levels besides just consumer fraud. So I guess the last thing I want to say is um, reach out on anything and report fraud. Uh, the way we're able to get ahead and win is people reporting fraud. A lot of folks that are over 65, lots of times are afraid to, if they've been scammed, they're afraid to report. 
Um, all of us can be embarrassed that we were, we slipped up the way we did and something happened, but you need to report it. And, and even if we're taking this to the FBI site, if it's a big internet scam, like I said, they have the greater resources to compile this and see that it's happening all over the country in certain regions. And often they can suppress the fraudulent activity or the people responsible, you know, for it. So um, that's all I have. That was a lot. And that's just skimming the surface. Um, I'm happy to take some more questions, but I hope this was helpful. You already know it's going to be recorded. It is. It, it has been recorded, and I can make this available. Um, but I hope it was helpful. Absolutely, we appreciate it so much, Jamie. And we've also got Detective Bev Wilson on the line here. If anyone has any um, law enforcement specific questions about um, fraud or any sort of fraudulent activity, she's available to answer questions if we need that as well. So, if you've got anything, um, you're welcome to. Uh, you can either unmute yourself or submit your name in the chat box and we can uh, go ahead and unmute you and then get your question answered. Anybody? Oh, also while you're thinking, if you have any questions, just a reminder, we've got our shred event on, um, on Halloween morning. Um, we'll be there from nine to noon in the main parking lot at the Parker Police Department. Um, they're on the west side of the building. So we'd love to, um, we'd love to have you out. Ray, I see you raised your hand. I'm gonna unmute you. Go ahead, Ray. Um, yeah, um, another thing that's going on is improve your credit score. And there's all these companies to improve your credit score. Right. Um, is there any fraud um, red flags there? Because I'm sure you have to give them your social and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, there, there are a lot. There, there are a lot of <laughs> fraudulent ones out there. Um, there's plenty of information out there for you to you to do that. Um, um, a lot, like I said, a lot of this information can be found on the credit bureau sites or their apps. Um, tell you how to do that, um, but it's just your information. Like I, I said, your information is an asset. Your personal information, your financial information alone, just by themselves. They're assets and they're worth something to, they're definitely worth something to you. But they're also worth a lot to these bad people. So, you know, we do, we do give our sensitive information out from time to time, but just do the research, um, vet it out and just make sure they're legitimate you know, for not so much what you're talking about, but just other businesses and what have you. Go to the BBB site, bbb.org and just, See what people are saying about these companies that you may work with or not work with. Um, a lot of them have alerts. A lot of them aren't licensed. A lot of them are suspended. Just investigate. You investigate and, and, and see. But getting back to the thing about improving your credit report, it just, bank, banks have it on their side. A lot of them do. The big ones do. The credit bureaus do. I myself would do a lot of it, you know, on my own. If, I, if there's a serious situation and there's been a lot of identification theft that's occurred, you know, on, on to me personally or my family, um, you know, that becomes a different, you know, matter. You, you may need to bring in a credit monitor, monitoring service to, to help you. So you just, just got to be careful and know what you're dealing with. Any other questions for either Jamie or Detective Wilson? That might be it. We have lots of comments that this was really informative and helpful and um, people were really appreciative. So thanks again, Jamie, for your time this evening. We appreciate it so much. Um, again, this information has been recorded. Um, and if you have any questions, you're, you're welcome to um, respond to either um, Jamie or myself, and we can uh, follow up with you and get you some additional information if there's anything that we missed this evening or anything you'd like to dive a little deeper on. So thank you again for joining us. Jamie, do you have any parting wisdom? I think I've already submitted. It's just report fraud. Report fraud. Don't be embarrassed. Um, and don't be hesitant to, to call the hotline. I, I, I get all kinds of calls and a lot of them, I'm dealing with a matter, I'm being asked to, but, but sometimes people just, they just have questions. They just, 
help me to understand and and I'm there for you in, in that space as well. And, and the title, the title lock question, I've gotten several of those. They just, what is this? Is it real? I'm happy to talk to you. I, I get calls about how to get through, how best to get through Verizon's customer service. <laughs> they have a matter of that because they're a bad company because you can't get through. So <laughs> call the DA's office to see what we know. And you know, matters like that, it's just, you know, me going to their site and just seeing what I can do. So I, I'm here for you. Just reach out. And Jamie is a fantastic resource. Um, I don't know if all DA's offices have you, uh, have a you, um, but I think it's a wonderful resource that we've got here in our community. So definitely take advantage of the education and, and um, information that he's got available. Yeah. Well, well thank you. And, and thank you to Parker Police Department. Thank you for all that all of you are doing. Grateful. Absolutely. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. So I think we can go ahead and wrap up. Okay. Everybody yeah. have a good night. Have a great Thank week. You. you as well. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye-bye.